Hello and welcome, my spider leaves. So, it's a bit early, but as I said, it doesn't feel all that early with all the things that happen in King Oja. But today will be the debut of the sixth ranger. I am excited. Episode 12 The Sixth King. So, Jeremy, who is also the narrator, somehow, asks us if we want to know what's up with him. Yeah, of course we do! Like, what are you about? Are you a Bagnarok? Are the actual Bagnarok people humans? There are so many questions I'm having here. Also, are you supposed to be those two little spiders on the chest of the King Oja? Well, we aren't supposed to ask these questions, I guess, because when Ran does, she gets spider silk. In her face. That's definitely what that is. Don't think anything else, weirdo. Then, then he just outright reveals that he has written the King Oja legend, which is a tale from 2000 years ago. He doesn't look that old, but I guess Japanese people just don't really age. Also, like, he wrote in that that the Bagnarok will be awakened after 2000 years again. Which he says is just a little prophecy of him. Now, either everything he says is completely the truth, or he is completely full of BS. I kinda hope it's kinda both. Which doesn't really make sense, but would be very funny and interesting. Huh. Yeah, I like this phrasing. He is supposed to be a spider, he can do all the spider silk stuff, so... He pulled the strings in the back. Neat. Well, obviously, Rita's putting him under arrest because, well, he did a lot of offensive feats here, so... Yeah, makes sense. However, he is the sixth ranger. Those tend to be pretty powerful, so I guess he won't be taken that easy. He is taken away very easily. Well... Obviously, there are some ties between Jeremy and the Bagnarok Empire. Though, it does really, really not seem like they're just allies, because Kamejim and Deathnarok here, yeah, they don't like what he's doing. Given that he betrayed them last episode, yeah, that's kinda logical, I would say. But I really wonder where this is going, like, it's very well written as a mystery. Okay, so instead of telling us what he is, who he is, when he is, that doesn't make sense. He wants us to guess what he is? Like, just tell us, dude, why do you make it a mystery? So he does know that Sasurine, or God Scorpion, was hidden underneath this empire. Why does he know that? He has hidden it there. According to him, he might still be lying, for all we know. Also, he apparently is a 3D pen, because with the silk he can ride into the air. That's kinda neat. The Thundercracker? The That sounds like it hurts. In not the good ways. And then we get this reveal that just adds layers to Kagoragi. He has a sister, called Suzume, who is in the hands of Rakles, who will guarantee her safety. That is, well, hopefully nothing bad will happen to her, if you get the gist. Yeah, Kagoragi seems like the most straightforward character, but he has so many layers by now, an onion would be ashamed. Oh. Now that's a bit disappointing. The Thundercracker is just a lie detector. Huh. Oh well. At least we can find out if he is lying or not. Oh! Oh yeah! The Thunder is cracking! As Gira told the lie of him being evil. The thing he's all about, but, well, the lie detector does detect that as a lie, which is just a funny scene. I love this. And then again, Gira's out now, being hit by... 
a lot of electricity here. Ouch. And after that not activating for Jeremy here. Yeah, Rita just says it's broken. Even though we did see it work just now, so him saying he's a bit over 2000 years old appears to be the truth. Or the thing is actually broken, or he has some trickery going on to not detect a lie. Mm. Definitely not broken, because it fried Shirokara. Though, what's a bit sad is, they all come to his help. While completely ignoring that the same happened to Gira. It's sad, but also very funny. And yet another bomb of truth. That musician he's always listening to is called Gin, who Jeremy knows. Gin also taught Yanma all about computers and stuff. And according to Jeremy, he taught Gin all that stuff. Which means he wasn't asleep for those 2000 years, but kinda very active. At least quite recently, when Gin still was around. Assuming Gin is dead, we don't really know that, but that's typically how it goes with mentor people. Poor people. I would never mentor someone in a show like this. Yeah, we want to know what your motivation is, because you're kinda against the Bagnarok, you're kinda not against the Bagnarok, you're kinda against us, you're kinda not against us. What the heck is going on? Why don't you just tell us? Oh, come on. You enter with flowers, the way you are dressed. Who would fall for your disguise here? You're worse than Team Rocket. Oh, uh, yeah. This one. This one would fall for that. Oh! You think? Well... Those weren't all that good disguises, I would say. And now he just gives Scorpion back to run. This guy is confusing me and I actually really like it. Like, I wasn't that invested in the 6th Ranger in a long time, I feel. This is great. Oh, the Phantom known as the Spider-Man. He's not red enough to be Spider-Man. But well, Rita has some intel on him. Let's see what this will be about. So, they have seen this mysterious Spider-Man over the decades. He appeared in a lot of centuries, decades, at various points. That can only mean one thing. Here's Keanu Reeves. And he also did not kill Death Narok. As Kaguragi has seen it, he survived that hit. Which means... Yeah, what exactly does this mean? Also, this sign on Death Narok here is also found on Jeremy's back, so that definitely is a connection between him and the Bagnarok. Which we as the viewers already knew. Because we have seen it last episode. Uh, somehow I feel like I have learned a couple of things here and no less because of it. This is great. And then they call him an enemy because, well, it all points to him not being their ally, I guess. But he kind of seems to react allergic to that word. So, he doesn't see himself as an enemy to them nor the Bagnarok? Something like that? But, like, the Bagnarok are killing people, so... Yeah, either be on the side of the killers or the killed. Preferably on the killed ones, because obviously the Bagnarok are evil. So decide? I think it's more complicated than that probably though. And just in time for us getting answers, the Bagnarok of course attack. Well, now we will see who he is actually fighting against. I still think he might be evil. Kinda-ish, not really, but still kinda-ish. I feel broken now. And Sebastian gives Gira his mask, because... Well, it actually makes sense. He cannot just go into Shugodem, because he's still supposed to be dead. 
And then again, he has that sword, he wears red, he's dressed like everybody knows he's dressed. Yeah, maybe they are dumb enough to fall for that anyway, because they also believe Ragnar's lies, which obviously are lies. Okay, so he straight out is killing the Bagnarok, which means he is on something's side. Not ours, not the Bagnarok side, but a completely different third side? Wait, there is a third side. I haven't even thought about that. Might he be on Ragnar's side? No, we have seen evidence that he definitely isn't on his side, so... There's a fourth side here. Well, two more and we have a cube. Okay, he gives us another clue. We should read between the lines. Which lines? That King Oja story? What? Why don't you just tell us? Oh, oh, Gira, thinking through everything seems to realize something. Maybe he has it all figured out now, who Jeremy is. He is Gira though, so no, he has no idea. I love this guy, this is the best character in the show. They all are really great characters, but Gira just is so, so outstandingly good and well written. For a Sentai show, obviously. I just... the jokes hit really, really good. What is keeping us from seeing the truth? I don't know. Why aren't you just telling us? This guy doesn't really get on my nerves with that, because I really enjoy this back and forth stuff of him being that secretive while wanting to find out what they think he is. Does he even want to have them find out what he is? Or is he just teasing them? And that's exactly the thing I enjoy about him. Oh. Okay. The story tells us about five heroes. There was a sixth hero, though. Now we're getting somewhere. Though the book doesn't really say that, so where should we have read that? Ah! Uh, by reading between the lines, he meant that we should read the... Empty page. Sure, that empty page is weird. Why would a book have an empty page? There's something up with that. Granted. But it is an empty page. What should you do with that? There's nothing you can actually prove here. Just some things you could imagine, but it could be like everything. So, we do learn more about that sixth hero. And he was a criminal. Because he fell in love. A forbidden love with a Bagnarok woman. I'm more puzzled about how these two even can create a child. Uh, but yeah, that's Jeremy. He's the child of these two. Also, why does this make me think of Zack Fair from Final Fantasy VII? Weird. So, his whole secret is that he's a mixture between Bagnarok and human. And I have to say, that is extremely interesting. Because we did have rangers before that were enemies, or from another race, that is either evil, sometimes not evil, like in Kira Major for example, but like a real mixture? As far as I know, might be wrong about that, but that never happened. This is actually cool. Again, how insect and human procreate, who knows, but it works. The Bagnarok aren't insect insects, they're based on insects, humanoid insects, so might just as well work. And that is also why he wants to become king of everyone, because that would mean everyone can live together in peace, no matter if they are a mixture of two different races or whatever. And that is actually kind of a neat motivation, to be honest. That is really, really cool. Here I am, kind of rooting for Gira still to become king, but I don't know, this guy becoming king might as well work. Though I think Gira would probably fulfill his dream while he is king as well. And well, Gira can still be king of Shugodem, 
while he is king of the kings. Oh, the opening line, king of kings. Is that referring to him? Huh. Probably not. But our five kings are very angry at him because... Yeah, you could have just said that. Why? What is the reason for being that secretive? What the heck? What do you have to say in your defense for this? That's all. Just a... Huh? He, he didn't even realize he could have just said that? Is that what this is about? Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of dumb and makes me like him even more. Ah, his reason is because he loves them. Uh, not really, but apparently in his language there's nothing really describing his feeling. Except something that is... A bit too much, like romantic love or something, I think? It's not quite clear what exactly exists in his language, but he was too shy to write that down. <sighs> what the heck is happening here? <laughs> and why do I like it that much? I really like it. I really do. Oh, yeah, Death Rock attacks after that. Well, they are friends now, so it's six against one. And that one kind of had the chance to kill you before, so... Yeah, you should run. So, transformation time. Looking forward to this. Though that phrase, guy go... Yeah, I know the subs show guys go, but... It definitely says guy go. I don't know, that doesn't really sound like Kumo at all. Which would be spider in Japanese, so... I did look it up, but couldn't find anything out what this is about. Maybe it's a certain specific kind of spider? But, yeah, tell me in the comments if you do know anything about it. I can't find anything, to be honest. Oh, yes, 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 yes! I love this. I so, 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 so love this. We don't have another silver or gold ranger here. Granted, for the extra ranger, white isn't that uncommon of a color. But it's also, well, not silver or gold. We have an abundance of those already. Sure, he has some gold parts, but hey, that's fine. That's mostly a sub-color, if you want to even call it a sub-color. And not the main color. The main color is white. White? White with just a few gold highlights. Also, his outfit looks great. He doesn't look too far away from the other rangers, which I like. I don't really like it if the extra ranger is too far removed, except if it's like in the case of something like Ninja Man, where it's an extra hero and not an extra ranger. But yeah, this is great. The spider visor, that works so well. I do wonder how the suit actor can see anything through that though, but apparently it works. And his whole entrance with the backwards flip while transforming and stuff. This is just great. Yes, yes, more of that please. Stop gold and silver. Also, the whole fighting scene that follows, this is so awesomely staged. I really love it. And the use of his venom, because he's a venomous spider, why not, there are venomous spiders, and the net and his silk, it's just working so great. Now I only wonder, would this be the end of Death Rock? Like, I mean, he doesn't seem much of a <laughs> threat anymore. Yeah, pun totally not intended, but still liking it. But, well, ending him like this, I don't know. But yeah, as he said, so the story goes. And this episode ends with that sentence. This, like, 12 out of 12 episodes were great. There were some not as great as others, obviously, but I would all of them, all of them belong in S tier. Like, this is episode 12. And I am sure this will be my new 
favorite Super Sentai show. I just hope they don't drop the ball somewhere. Please do not. I love it so much thus far. I even bought the mecha you cannot see because it's behind my green screen. Uh, yeah, well, I have a video on that. It's in the end cut, so look out for that. But what can I say? This is a great introductory episode. No, no, not even an introductory episode. The character was introduced in the last episode, and now we got a transforming episode, and it worked out so well. They didn't even spoil it in the preview all that badly, like they usually do, which I appreciate so much. They're doing everything right, and I should stop now, because I am fanboying here, and you get the gist already. I love this, and yeah, I definitely... <clears throat> uh, yeah, um, you now tell me what you think about Jeremy Brassieri and this episode and spider Cumulus and all things down in the comments below. Looking forward to see your hopefully positive opinions. Also share the negative ones if you have them. I'm interested in those as well. And also, take your spider silk and wrangle up the like and subscribe button as well as that bell. And don't forget to check out the links down in the description where you can find my socials and all the stuff. Also my Twitch, where I livestream every Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Hope to see you over there as well. And until next time, bye-bee. Oh, also there's a spider behind you. <laughs>